Today I'm going to explain what I've done on my 2017 Toyota 6 drivetrain wise. And yes, I'm going to make a lot of purists mad, but I don't care. I did take out the FA20 and swap the K24 into it. Yes, I did have the turbo FA20, which was fine for the most part. Never had any issues with it besides the fact that my fuel tank decided to float one and did not stop working. And technically the reason why I completely swapped this car is because I ran out of gas in it because my fuel float didn't work. And I recently filled it up and then went down the rabbit hole of swapping this car to a K24. I ended up going with the K Power Industries uh, full kit at first when it was N when I was driving around NA. Um, then I decided I wanted more power and ended up going with a Precision 6266. The way it sits right now between 11 and 12 PSI, it's currently around 450 to 500 horsepower, depending on which fuel I have in it. Um, on, 90, on 93, it's probably around 420. On full E85, it's around 500. Um, yeah, so I went this route because I was just tired of dealing with the 400 horsepower range of the F820, which is like the upper limits of those. We all know those like to shit out around 400 horsepower. Same with the transmissions. Um, yeah, so the K-Power Industries kit, if you're going to go a swap route, is phenomenal. If you're going to go the NA route, if you're going to go big boost, you're going to need a different transmission in the factories because they're like glass. Um, I opted to send my car down to Granis Racing in Florida for a T56 Magnum. And I have no complaints with that whatsoever. Joel is a great guy. If you guys want to send a, if you want to send him or ask him for a quote, he'll get you back within a day or two. Great guy. Would 100% recommend one of his transmissions in a car if you're going to go big power for Jay-Z, K's, Rotaries, whatever you want. He, he'll get it done for you. Um, I have... Alpha Injections 1300cc injectors right now. I probably have to upgrade those in the future when I go with the, uh, the built head. Um, this motor is completely stock right now. It just has a 50 degree timing gear and a Type S oil pump. I have a built head sitting in the corner over here. And um, whenever I get the time and the money to get a built block, then I'll slap that in here and go on my way i have the full radium kit for the car the factory or the the factory and pump with dual wall barrows 450s into their into radium's full line kit up to the fuel regulator here and then i have the k24 k20 k24 rail um yeah, so that that gives me all the fuel that I need. I have, a, let's see, what else do I have? I have a Tilton 215 twin disc on this. Um, it's not too terribly loud. It's like a moderate. It is a um, full aluminum bell housing so it's like a factory bell housing there is no adapter plates no nothing onto it that's kind of the reason i got away from the k power kit i'm not a fan of adapter plates and i basically wanted just a regular transmission with right bolted up to the block and then joel hap i happened to get joel's first uh first bell housing that he made I, but yeah so there's that. It's made it up to aluminum three inch drive shaft up to an IS 300 diff with 800 horsepower drive shaft axles, which I've never had an issue with. I have, I don't know if you guys can really see it, but I have a monster four inch core from Rotary Works. 
in there. And it's, I never see temperatures above 75 degrees, um, which is phenomenal for boost. Um, never really had, I have a coil rad, Michi, Michi dual fans, never, never really had an issue. The only issue I have, the only issue that I don't personally like about this right now is the cooling where the where K Power locates their cooling lines from from them. I am going to AN line it from the radiator over here and just go straight around to the back side so it's hidden. I want to get the coolant away from the hot side. Um, what else do I have? Yeah, so basically, the car is five hundred horsepower. It moves. Um, if anybody has any questions with doing a swap, feel free to ask me. I'm down to talk about it if you need help, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. It's ran on a full Hall Tech Lee fifteen hundred. I have I have the dash. I have the full IC7 dash in the car with the Alltech tucked in here. And I have, there's the Granis Racing T56 Magnum, which is probably my favorite. Um, yes, sidetrack here, but the GR steering wheel does fit in your 17 or your 13s through your 20s. So that's a heads up. And the controls. Uh, these controls here will eventually work for rolling anti-lag for me, but yeah, that's that um, What else? Yeah, no, this is a little choppy. It's like my first time doing the videos and stuff like that I'm not used to being behind the camera. So eventually I'll get in front of the camera, but yeah, so I have Heritage FBC wheels Tens in the front, kind of like Brembo's in the front. Uh, Twelve and a half in the rear. I'm on my small tire right now. I have my 305 drag setup. It's just I need to figure out the ABS in this car before I can run that. I think I have to go to a 265 up front. This isn't a big deal. Um, but yeah, so that's just a basic overview i'm probably going to do like driving povs next time um what else but yeah so if you're going to if you're trying to get into this if into the swaps i know not everybody can afford it and stuff like that they are kind of expensive but if you're going if you're going to do the swap route it's probably right around an NA setup is around the same as a fully built F820. So there is that. Um, but pound for pound when driving this car NA versus when it was factory NA, this makes about almost 100 horsepower more right off the gate. And to be honest, if I didn't go turbo, I probably would have went high rev K24. Or with ITBs, but that's still not the option in the future. I might change the setup on it, but I don't know. I like to change things up a lot, so. Um, but yeah, so if you guys have any questions or have any ideas for me to do, uh, let me know. Um, like I said, this is my only the second time really doing a video. I'm not used to being behind the camera right now. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, just let me know if you guys want to see what you want to see about this car. I know you guys probably want to see racing videos. Uh, I'll get down to that a little bit in a little in a little while, but it's I might take it to a track day here or there. But this car, for the most part, is staying the way it is probably for the next three to four months. I'll I'll be currently I'm. About to move to California from Pennsylvania, so it's going to be like a total shock for me to get out there.
But this car will be on the streets in California. Just saying now. I'm not afraid to drive it. But yeah, well, that's going to end today's this short episode. But if you guys have any questions, just let me know. I will gladly explain what you have to do or if you need any help or just any general questions about this chassis. I'm fairly pretty good with it, like with common issues. All right, guys, have a good one.